Statistics and Excel. Correlation calculation with strange result. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon on the left hand side, OneNote presentation, 1740 correlation calculation with strange result tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go into the view tab, immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose be able to read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie into the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here thinking about correlation where we have different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relation or correlation between them. In other words, are the different dots and the data sets moving together in some way, shape or form? If there is a correlation or mathematical relation between the data sets, the next logical question would of course be, is there a cause and effect relationship that's causing that correlation or mathematical relation? And if there is a causal relationship, the next logical question would be, what's the causal factor in the causal relation which is causing the mathematical correlation? In prior presentations, we thought about a perfect positive and perfect negative correlation, which are things that you don't actually often see when working practice problems or in practice, because usually we're looking at two different data sets that might have trends together for some reason, but not a perfect correlation. So it's useful to think about the perfect situation in theory, but in practice, it's not usually going to be a perfect correlation. We then looked at an example with a few data points so that we can see an imperfect correlation with a few data points so we can analyze it fairly easily. We then looked at a correlation where we had random data sets that we generated so we can see how we generated the data sets and what the correlation between them were. Now we're looking at a situation where we're going to get an unusual result with the correlation. This being a reminder that like any statistics, that we can't simply rely on one number all the time. We still have to use our intuition. We still have to think about what is actually happening here. What is it telling us? And oftentimes we have to look at things from multiple angles if we want to get a proper perspective about what the data is actually telling us. So we're going to construct our data this way. We're going to have an X and a Y, this being our two different data sets. And we're just going to randomly, we're just going to pick an X and a Y and see whether or not they're correlated. The points we're going to be plotting are X and Y are 1, X and Y are 2, X and Y are 3, X and Y are 4, X and Y are 5. Wow, they seem very correlated. But then the last one, you've got X is 0 and Y is 7. So if we were to consider this data, let's do our mathematical calculations. Obviously, looking at it, we would say, huh, hey, you know, if I looked at that data set, I'd be like, yeah, they look like there's some kind of relationship going on there. There looks to be uh, some kind of, uh, you know, one <laughs> looks to be tied to the other possibly in some way, shape or form. Let's do the math on it. So if we do the calculation of the mean, the mean is going to be the average. We can actually do it now since we don't have that many data points. We could say, well, this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 0 divided by how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 5 is going to give us, let's do that one more time. I think I messed up. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 0 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divided by 6. And then I get the 2.5. If I do the same thing for the other one, 
I get a 3.7 or 6.7 on it. And then if I take the standard deviation, we're taking the standard deviation of the sample. With, this is a, a measure of spread of the data, you will recall. 1.87 and 2.16. Now let's do our mathematical calculation, taking in essence the z-scores of the first data set. Each point minus the mean divided by the uh, standard deviation times each point, same z-score of the second divided by n minus 1. So if I take my first data set of x, point 1, and I look at the z, the z will be, calculating the z is going to be 1 minus 2.5 divided by the standard d, 1.87, gives us about 0.8. And obviously the second one would be 2 minus 2.5 divided by the standard D 1.87, that's going to be the uh, 0.27 about. We do that all the way down for all of the data points and here's the related Z's. And then I can do that for the, the Y's, same kind of thing. So the first one is gonna be one minus the mean this time for the Y is 3.67 divided by the standard D for the sample of the Y 2.16 is going to give us 1.23 about. We do that all the way down. And then we can multiply the Z's together to see what the Z's together will be. 0.8 times the 1.23, we get the 0.99 about. Next one, of course, would be the... Uh, 0.27 times the 0.77, we get about 0.21 and so on. Then we just sum up the Z's to see what that'll be. And that'll be the numerator is what it'll be. So if we do that, we're going to say, let's format this to get the, the numerator, the sum of the B's. It comes out to zero. If I add up all these column, it comes out to zero. And then if I say that the denominator is n minus 1, denominator n minus 1, n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, 6 minus 1 is 5. So 0 numerator divided by 5 denominator gives us, of course, a correlation of 0. 0 correlation. So, so that might be surprising. We might say, well, hey, hold on a second. No correlation here. If I look at those data sets, is that what we would really want to say? If we see these data points in real life, would we really want to say in our mind uh, that there's no correlation, right? And, and that's the problem of here because we probably want to say, it looks like there's something going on here, but then it got hit, it got messed up by that one, you know, data point. So we're going to say, all right, uh, if I was to calculate this in Excel, we can use the data analysis tool here if you don't have the analysis tool pack you can turn it on as we do in the excel practice problem and it'll do the calculation for you we would just select the data sets looking for the correlation and and then we would select the range i would put labels place it somewhere and then excel will give us this one and here's the x and the y we're looking at that zero it gives us the zero correlation this is a static uh, thing here. It's not dynamic. It will not move uh, as we change an Excel worksheet, but it's great to give a preliminary look or a double check. Now note that if I did that again, and of course, if I eliminated the last data point, if I did the correlation for just this down to this data point, eliminating the last one, we would have a perfect correlation, of course. It would be one perfectly correlated. So, so clearly, if we were to look at those two data sets, we might come to the conclusion that getting a zero correlation might not be exactly right. We might want to do some more digging in it. If we were to plot this out, we can see the data points here. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Looks like there's a positive uh, correlation between them. But then you've got this uh, zero seven up top, which of course skewed our correlation calculation to zero. But looking at it pictorially, does does this line that represents the, uh, the, the trend line being exactly straight, zero correlation, 
is that what we really want to say about this data where one, two, three, four, five data points are in perfect alignment together? Probably not. So this is just a point that no matter no matter what tool we're using, uh, if we just if we just plug this thing into the into the computer using say the data analysis and I get one or I get zero and I say it's, it's totally not correlated at all, that might not be that's not the only angle we would want to look at just like all of statistics we don't want to look at it from just one angle typically we would want to then plot it out and say huh oh, well maybe that seems kind of funny maybe there's something else going on here i'd want to drill down into it possibly further than that and obviously you could see that pictorially you can also see it if you do the math over here you would and just look at the data sets and start looking at the z-scores it's likely that you might pick up some more information that would that give you some more insights as you as you go through the correlation calculation